most anticipated movie of this year was Deadpool and Wolverine. For so many reasons, the character of Deadpool means the world to me. This is going to be my non-spoiler review. So with all that said, let's say this together, guys. Let's fucking go. What's going on, buddy? Welcome back to a brand new movie review. Today, I'm going to be discussing my non-spoiler thoughts on Deadpool and Wolverine. Probably the most anticipated film for many people out there. I know it was for me, but it was also the movie that I was the most nervous about this year. And I say that because there are so many factors going into this. The MCU hasn't really been hitting for everyone. I think it's been fine, but there's been a lot of downpours to it all and some things that just really make it oversaturated and then at the same time for people who don't know Deadpool is one of my favorite comic book heroes there's so much that I relate to from Wade Wilson and from those comics and just being called annoying and all sorts of things like that and then that first Deadpool film came out and it was everything that I've ever wanted it's one of my most rewatched movies ever I mean when it comes down to just seeing that film in theaters I've probably seen it over 35 to 40 times in movie theaters yes when it came out it was like my obsession I would go at least two to three times a week opening week and I saw it four to five times I was obsessed with that movie Deadpool 2 I thought was good I liked it but on rewatches it, it really hasn't hit the mark for me so I was wanting something to really come back and hit hard and I didn't know if we were ever going to get another Deadpool movie with at least Ryan Reynolds. A lot of that comes from the Fox merger, but I was hoping that we would. And then back in, I think, 2022, I'm sitting at my office desk and this video comes up from Ryan Reynolds. And I go to click on it and I watch it. And right at the end where he says, Hey, Hugh, you want to play Wolverine one more time? Yeah, sure, Ryan. My mind was like blown. Not in a million years that Hugh Jackman would come back and play Wolverine, specifically after what he gave in Logan, which I think is one of the best comic book movies of all time, but as well as the perfect send off for an actor from a role. And that worried me. How are you going to touch on the legacy of Logan? And I'm not just talking about the movie itself, but bringing back Hugh Jackman, you have to warrant that effect. And I, as I said in my intro of me wearing this suit and coming in and screaming, let's fucking go, this lived up to the hype. It hit up my expectations of exactly what I wanted from this. And it even gave me a little bit more than I was expecting. Of course, this is a non-spoiler review, so I am going to be as vague as I possibly can. I am going to San Diego Comic-Con this week. There will be a spoiler review out later this week. Once I get to see it there at San Diego with my friend, please look out for that. That is going to be such a fun review to do. But I'm also going to have a ton of other content as well. So if you're into just Marvel movies, TV, games, whatever it is, if you are a movie nerd, this is truly a channel for you guys. Make sure to hit that like and subscribe button. And without further ado, let's dive into Deadpool and Wolverine because this takes place six years after the events of Deadpool 2. Wade Wilson lives a quiet life having left his time as the mercenary Deadpool behind him until the TVA, organization that exists outside of time and space and monitors the timeline, pulls him into a new mission with his home universe facing an existential threat. Wilson reluctantly joins an even more reluctant Wolverine on a mission that will change the history of the MCU. You know who your main players are. It's Ryan Reynolds and Hugh Jackman. And again, I kind of left this theater with so many thoughts and I felt overwhelmed in the best possible way. And I think a lot of that comes from how much this movie throws at you, but also in terms of what it's trying to say. Now, some things I actually want to establish before I really dive into my pros is one, while it says it's going to change the MCU, I think a lot of us need to temper our expectations down for that. Some things that they introduce in this film, I'm actually really interested to see how it affects the MCU later on in the future. But overall, this is actually a very self-contained story, one that dives into a part of the multiverse, but is something that i am actually been wanting from this multiverse saga, is seeing a different angle of the universe, of the comic book sphere, and in a way, this is more of a Planes, Trains, and Automobiles movie with Ryan Reynolds and Hugh Jackman as Deadpool and Wolverine. Traveling through their entire adventure and maybe meeting some people along the way. And, you know, if what you're expecting from this movie is what you're looking for, then you got it here. 
but I don't think we should expect something that's going to alter the MCU forever, at least as of right now. This is a great self-contained adventure that pokes fun and plays with the multiverse and specifically the MCU, but also the Fox legacy. And that's what I really loved is that in the end of the day, this is a love letter to 20th Century Fox. And when you really look at it, that original X-Men film is what kicked off and really much ground broke everything for superhero movies. It got my dad into superheroes. And that's saying a lot because he is not one of those people that would grow up reading comics. He started to love the X-Men and he still talks to today that when that first X-Men film dropped, it was such a mind-blowing thing. I think overall when you look at this film, it's doing so many different things that I really loved. And one of that is developing Ryan Reynolds, Wade Wilson a little bit further and more and specifically seeing from where he comes from Deadpool 1 and 2. But at the same point in time, it's also doing the same thing for this new version of Wolverine that we have never seen before. And on top of that, even more, like I said, it's a love letter to what Fox had done bringing that into the MCU and what Deadpool does best is flipping the comic book genre on its head and saying hell no this is my movie this is what I'm going to do and that's what that first Deadpool movie did is it flipped the comic book genre on what an origin story should be and it changed it and disguised itself as a romantic comedy and had this nice little dramatic angle that was hilarious fun entertaining and awesome and then the second film kind of pokes fun at like the Avengers with the whole X-Force stuff and this one again ties into something that MCU has been struggling with the multiverse saga and its whole continuation after Endgame. And in a way, it's showcasing all of that. And I think what the writers really did so great here was tying all that together. And for me, Deadpool and Wolverine tackles all of that in such a great nuance that I wasn't expecting that. But what I was really happy with, and I really want to get this out of the way as well with this, is how they handled the legacy of Logan. Now, I know a lot of us were worried about that. From the start, I promise you, like, the opening credit scene for this first off, incredible, amazing, I love it, the usage of the music note there, just top tier in every way, and so entertaining. I think Deadpool's had some of the best openings ever for a comic book movie. This is definitely one of them, and it goes right up there. It might be my favorite Deadpool opening, but again, I like, they establish it right off the bat, what is going on with it. But I actually like how it continues to play off that legacy and again staying as vague as possible they do a fantastic job with that and a certain things that they bring up made me go i like that right off the top i'll be honest like i was like i don't know how everyone's gonna feel about this but once it came around full circle i dug it and i think that's where i just have to say that like hugh jackman like you are the man like i think when it comes down to like a mount rushmore of comic book casting he has to be like the number one of it all but he's phenomenal in this. And I love this is a different version of Logan than we've ever seen before. And I think that version that we get in here is maybe one of my favorite performances from Hugh Jackman as the character. It has this aspect to him that really feels heartbreaking and lonely. Which is something that I feel that the Deadpool originally had. Is that he didn't want to be alone. He didn't want to end up alone. And that's kind of where he is in this whole world and headspace that he is at when we come back into Deadpool 3 or Deadpool and Wolverine, whatever you want to call it. And again, Hugh Jackman, just phenomenal in this. Ryan Reynolds, excellent, hilarious, funny. If you think he's annoying as Deadpool, you're still going to think he's annoying here. But he's for me, he is the most annoying and most entertaining and most relatable at least one of the more relatable superheroes out there, and I love what they did with him here. Sticking on performances, Emma Corrin as Cassandra Nova was also really good. I wish they used her a little bit more in here, but again, creepy. Like, imagine the worst version of Professor X in, like, the most creepiest way. That's her. Alongside that, I also have to give a shout-out to Matthew McFadden, who I think was awesome as Mr. Paradox as well. That's where I continue, like, to feel so rambled on this review, since I can't really, like, go from X to Y to Z. I have to kind of just sit here and, like, definitively name off the things that I liked without getting into spoilers. So, also touching on this, I thought some of the action in here is some of the best in the entire franchise. Most notably, everything that's, like, more 
more just Deadpool and Wolverine, like especially from some of the stuff you've seen in the trailer when they fight each other, that sequence lives up to the hype. Certain other little moments are great. And I know a lot of people are going to be wondering, what about the big surprises? Everyone's been guessing who's showing up in here. It lives up to it. Like it, it lives up to it. And all those big surprises made me smile, get giddy, laugh out loud. Some I did not expect whatsoever, even by like doing like videos and like predicting like some of them I was way off on and I loved it. I love the usage of it too. And I love how that was integrated into the story because a lot of people I know are nervous. Like, are they just going to go cameo galore and surprise galore? And for me, the usage of all of those big surprises are actually very heartfelt and tied to the story that again, pertain in a very entertaining way that made me laugh made me smile, made me very giddy, but takes me back a little bit and makes me look at other things and goes, yeah, that was really clever how you did that. I think cleverness is the thing that really keys into here, specifically with Deadpool's fourth wall breaking. A lot of the jokes hit for me because I'm so into this space and I think it's going to be different for every single person in here, but I like how more snappy, they're still vulgar, they're still nasty, like do not get me wrong, while this is a Disney MCU movie and it's the first R-rated film in the MCU, they do not shy away from that. It is gory, it is vulgar, it is raunchy as hell. But they really nail into all those tones and everything that we've come to expect from a Deadpool movie. And it tells you right off the bat, like, this is not your normal Marvel movie. That's, again, what Deadpool does so best. Honestly, like, part of me just wanted more from this, like, in terms of its runtime. Like, it's two hours and seven minutes and it flies by. And I think that's a great pacing to it all. But I could have sat there and watched another 20, 30 minutes of this, of just enjoying these characters on this road trip and what other things that they might discover. I think that's about as many pros as I can say without getting into spoilers so let's jump into my issues now while I had a blast with this movie and on the surface I did love Deadpool and Wolverine I loved my time with this movie very much the shot of adrenaline that the MCU needed for a lot of its fans out there but let's get into some of my issues first off one thing I have not mentioned is Sean Levy as the director and I don't know if this is more of an issue I think it's more of a mixed aspect and I've always been mixed on a lot of his directing efforts I think sometimes he is an excellent director and sometimes some of it just feels a little bit not there. And I think with Deadpool and Wolverine going into this, I was a little bit nervous on him handling this, and I think he did an overall solid job. But there's some action scenes, while I say are great, the bigger, more glorified ones, I honestly expected a little bit more from, per se. Again, I can't get into that too much without getting into spoilers, but I expected a little bit more when it came down to those, and I feel like that was kind of lacking just a tad bit. Not to say that they're not entertaining, but like we've seen some amazing action set pieces in the MCU and specifically bigger, more epic ones. And it feels like when they had a lot of characters in one sequence, I kind of was just like, OK, like this is a weird shot to choose from. Really enough, that's like a minor gripe. But the other few things that I had really much more of my issues was the music drops. Sometimes some of them work really well and sometimes it's a little bit too much in terms of like dropping the music. Don't get me wrong, like all the needle drops are great. But some of them I didn't feel like were needed and kind of took me out of the environment. It felt like I was like listening to a Spotify playlist at times. Last but not least, one thing to mention, again, this was in the press screening. Maybe it'll look better once it comes out, uh, is some of the special effects um, with Cassandra Nova, a little bit iffy. Um, she does this finger thing, and I'll leave it at that, but uh, didn't didn't work for me all the time. It, it Sometimes it took me out of the experience, but again, very much more of a nitpick. Being a griper on that point. Deadpool and Wolverine is about everything I wanted, and plus even a little more. Entertaining, bloodthirsty, hilarious, and even a shot in the arm to what the MCU is needing. A refreshing look at the multiverse saga and an entertaining riot that I can't wait to watch again and again. Hugh Jackman's return is great and different, and thankfully I loved how they handled the legacy of Logan, and also the usage of Wade's past really adds to the drama. Overall, it hit my expectations, and there's a lot that I want to say but I can't without spoiling it. So that is where I'm going to leave it at. Overall, I'm going to give Deadpool and Wolverine an A minus. I almost thought this like hit that 10 out of 10 range for me, but I cannot wait to see it again. And maybe it'll improve on rewatches. Maybe it won't. Who knows? But I had a damn good time with this. And uh, look forward to my MCU ranking. Look forward to my X-Men ranking. Look forward to my Deadpool ranking. Look forward to a lot of rankings that I have coming up. And thank you so much again for clicking on this. Make sure to hit that like and subscribe button as well. And of course, until next time, Stay classy.